One thing about defending individual liberty is that sometimes I need to defend actions I despise. And I'm a little odd about what I despise. I have no trouble with sex workers, with recreational drug users, with gamblers. But there is one group I abhor. And I'm talking about you, Rush Limbaugh. And you, Clarence Thomas. And you, H.L. Mencken. I'm talking about your disgusting drug habit. You smoke these cigars. These can stink up a whole neighborhood. I think there should be laws that prevent people from smoking these in public places. But Rocky Patel says I'm being unreasonable. He owns one of the biggest American cigar companies. So, look, you must agree that to many of us, these stink. This is awful. And it's reasonable to ban it in some places. Well, John, it's an art form. It's a culture that's transcended over generations. Once you actually learn how to enjoy a cigar, it's like enjoying a great bottle of wine, enjoying a great cup of coffee. And really, most cigar smokers are very respectful of people. And they try not to infringe on anybody's rights, but they want the right and privilege to enjoy a cigar. This is a legal product. It's an art form. It's wonderful. And it's something unique. And we can enjoy it in cigar lounges. I can enjoy it in Naples, Florida on the beach if I'm not sitting next to anybody and not infringing on their rights, I think it's a uh -huh. great, great concept. But there are reasonable air pollution rules, noise pollution rules. You don't have a right to be a public nuisance. These can be a public nuisance. I mean, I live in Manhattan. One guy on one block is offending lots of people on that block. You mean behind all that taxi pollution and bus pollution yes, and everything is, else? The taxis well, guess smell what? good compared to this. But you should certainly be able to go to a cigar lounge or a cigar store and smoke in it. And if you decide that you want to have a restaurant where you just want smokers smoking cigars, you have the perfect right to choose whether you want to patronize that restaurant or not. Yes, and that's this what is this one is area where about. we're in agreement. And, right. and let's explain this to the viewers. There are places called cigar lounges where that's consenting correct. adults go in an enclosed space. So I'm not exposed. People who don't want to be there are not exposed. And some places want to ban these? Right. And we have state-of-the-art ventilation. I opened a place called Burn in Naples, Florida. Florida, and we spent a ton of money to make sure every 60 seconds we have 100% fresh air. And you have cigar stores and wonderful lounges across this country everywhere. And people should be able to enjoy a premium cigar and enjoy this because, you know, you have cigarette smokers smoking cigarettes and cigar smokers prefer cigars. And unfortunately, we well, are, are under at, assault. Yeah, we're totally under assault. And this truly is a labor of love. It's an art form. And people enjoy it. And if we're not infringing on others, we should be able to have the right to enjoy a great cigar. San Francisco bans indoor cigar lounges entirely. Right. Boston told cigar bars they have 10 years to close. That's right. And in the city of New York, unless you were grandfathered in, you can't smoke anywhere else. You can't open another cigar lounge. And these lounges create a lot of jobs. I mean, this cigar industry just in the United States is responsible for about 85,000 jobs. And with this new impending FDA regulation, where the FDA now is looking to regulate something they know nothing about, we're looking at absolutely destroying all these jobs and a in an industry that is really an What does the FDA want to do and how would that destroy jobs? Well, what the FDA is doing is they want to regulate all tobacco and unfortunately cigars happens to be the unintended consequence. You have, for example, here, this is a blunt, okay? It's called a cigar because right now the definition of a premium cigar is very, very broad. That includes product like this, which is just a tobacco leaf like this that comes in a plastic tube like this and you just unwrap it and guess what you fill it with? Marijuana, Marijuana and things like kids that. call it a and blunt. So and they're after products like these. Unfortunately, we fall in the same category because the definition is too broad. So what we've done is introduce legislation to narrow the definition what a premium cigar is. It's got to be all natural tobacco, X amount of pounds per thousand. And we have right now 160 co-sponsors in the House supporting this legislation to give premium cigars an exemption from FDA regulation. See, this is why I say that the capitalists are the worst enemies of capitalism, because here's this guy saying, 
It's okay to regulate the other guys, but we premium guys should have an exempt. Actually, we're all for deregulation of everything, okay? We don't want, we're, I'm just pointing out that we happen to be falling as the unintended consequence of something that they're after. But it's very, very hard and you're nervous when the FDA is down your throat and they might virtually destroy your entire business. This beautiful box would have 75% warning stickers, ugly warning stickers on it. Every time I decide to make a blend, I would have to submit it to the FDA to make sure they would pass the blend so that I could actually have the Which cigar sold. Which would stop sold. you from introducing new yeah, blends. Yeah, I would have to go through case studies like a pharmaceutical drug. It would cost me a million and a half senator dollars. Senator Richard Blumenthal, the ridiculous senator from Connecticut, says cigars pose a serious threat to public health. Well, you know, unfortunately, nobody's done their research. They're not educated about cigars. They have no idea about the concept of cigars. This is something you sit around, whether you're a blue-collar worker, whether you're a CEO, a doctor, yeah. you get together and have well, a conversation. They do stink, but that the government can't tell the difference between consenting adults in a cigar lounge or a walk-in humidor and public... Uh, appalls me. Thank you, Rocky Patel. Thank you. Next, people who sell marijuana. My next guest sold it for 15 years. Then, a few months ago, the feds came.